Uh, you know, you see bubbles being passed around. You're like, okay, well, we should probably be showing <laughs> Do we really leave that as part of the... Yeah, let's leave that as the spontaneous right. real-life yes. opening of part three. This right. is part three of our interview. Thank you very much, Philip, with huge, tremendous mm. gratitude. I do have to ask some questions about Launch Africa, Great. the case study that we're writing. First of all, I'm dying to ask you, Zach George did the next step. He actually collected money and invested. Mm. You're running the incubator. Accelerator. Do you ever, yeah. Accelerator, sorry. Yeah. I... I Terminology yeah. I still screw up. Do you, do you ever get jealous? Do you ever think I should have done that when he did it? Did was there any kind of FOMO? Was there is there more money to be made, or do you just love the the, the role that you have? What are your reflections on that? Yeah, sure. No, so I mean, look, it was a very um, I mean, it was an ongoing discussion. So I mean, first of all, I, mean, I shared a little bit more about my background, but I mean, I've been involved in four VC funds um, in my career. Okay. So you've done uh, it, been there, done that. So, well, it's not to say I've been there, done that, but, but I will say that, you know, I uh, f f maybe perhaps there wasn't as much allure, um, but Zach and I talked for years about the fact that it was necessary, that, that there was a huge gap, that, you know, our own startups were uh, uh, were needing follow-on funding, and, and of course there was others as well, and, uh, you know, and Zach had a passion for it. He wanted to get into VC. He hadn't done VC before. Um, he had done, you know, other financial services. He's very, obviously very smart, very qualified. He'd been run, he and I had been running accelerators for at that point for five years. So, you know, th we both were really, really, we understood the space very well. Um, but yeah, he had a, he had a passion to go do it. And I didn't have that passion to go do uh, VC. Okay, um, he had the hunger, he had the passion. Yeah, and it was it was a new thing for him, um, and you know, and I really, really, really loved the startups um, okay. space, and you know, and and more particularly um, hands on. You know, like I like getting, I like being, you know, kind of that co-founder in in a way, right? For ten mm -hmm. startups at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas you know, once you get into venture, uh, it's it's a bit more. Of course, you're still involved, but the the startups are farther along in their journey. And they're less reliant. It's not a day in, day out interaction, right? Mm -hmm. So it is a different phase. So yeah, I think that you know Zach uh, found and, and Janine, you know, basically found their uh, found their right, you know, their kind of highest and best purpose, we'll say. Um, and yeah, I get to continue to do what I'm doing, and of course we're you know we're also working on our next evolution of of, of remaking ourselves, which I'm very excited about. But. So the next big huge question, the way that the case study is being framed is, if you were them or advising them, or maybe you have given advice, uh, you're raising your second fund, do you double down on existing investments? Do you, do you go after new investments? You've already covered that the climate has changed, it's tougher to raise money. What advice would you give them? Yeah, sure. Um, what I mean, should they do next? Yeah, no. I mean, full full disclosure. I mean, I am you know a, a part, a small part of the GP of, of Launch Africa Fund One and, and and Fund Two. So by all means, I, I do get the opportunity to to to, to also, maybe not say give advice, but certainly you know discuss uh, you know the, the the opportunities and and the approach. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's in in the classic startup world. You know, you're always responsive to the the. What, what, the, the change of the tides, right? It's never, you know, you, you never just go in with, 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 with a plan and say, this is what it's going to be. Um, you know, they've gone out, um, you know, to raise a bigger fund, you know, and originally at the time when they were first working on, on that plan, uh, the market was still looking quite, quite positive. Um, it's since gotten much, much tougher. Um, so, you know, I, they, they are evolving. Um, one of the things that they've been able to do, the Launch Africa has been able to do both in their first fund and, their, and uh, to some extent in their second fund, is not need to do huge, in, in fund one, they were able to do many, many small closes, um, which allowed them to make investments as they were continuing to raise more capital, they were already making investments. And that's how the really it went much more in parallel. Traditionally funds go out and there's a distinctive phase where you raise your fund and then there's, and then you, you close it and then you go out and you start investing and deploying. Um, they've actually done an exceptional job of, of doing that in parallel. And I think they'll continue to do that. Um, the, the fact that they are struggling to raise as much capital as they had hoped, um, so the more constrained in the capital that they are raising uh, means that um, the size of the investments um, is, is being adjusted to some extent. Um, 
and uh, but at the, uh, perhaps another way to, to to also attack this this question is that in the current um, well, in the, especially in the, in the African context, the biggest funding gap is at the earliest stage. And so even though as a fund, it can be more compelling uh, or more exciting to try and move upstream, uh, sorry, wasn't remember, let me say actually downstream, um, you know, towards later stage, um, there's actually much bigger need upstream. And it's the hardest part. Um, and it's something that they've done exceptionally well in Fund One and hope that they will continue to be a significant contributor to that in fund two. To the early stages, the, the very early stages. stages. Yes. And the last question that we'll ask right now is, because mm -hmm. the day is, is running out, um, the question that has come up repeatedly is how do you exit? Um, is it getting easier to exit out of a position in an African startup? Uh, and you, you talked about changing that model. Do you mm -hmm. want to elaborate on that? Is it is it tough? So it, it, it is very tough and it's and it's not getting easier um, in the short term because the model is basically like your your exit is someone else's investment right? right so when the total amount of investment decreases the total you know the, the, there's fewer rounds the rounds are smaller um, then it's even less likely that there's going to be you know excess capital to buy out an earlier investor what I mean the, the investors that are putting their money in are doing so because they want that capital to go to fund the startup not to pay out an earlier LP. So it, it's it's absolutely getting more difficult, but that just means it's getting more creative uh, and, and more intentional. And, and Launch Africa has actually done a really good job of, of building a team that are fostering and developing and, and, and really uh, curating those exits. So they're, they're building the relationships that can lead to exits, you know, one year, two years down the line. Um, but because they're putting in all the hard work and they're really fostering those relationships, they're creating their own destiny uh, versus just wait you know, and it, it, traditionally it's it's more accidental. You know, if you're an investor and, you know, you suddenly find out that, hey, there's the startups raising around and you're like, oh, cool, I'll sell some of my shares. But Launch Africa is doing a much more specific job of, of, of categorizing the startups, looking for certain startups might be an M&A, certain startups might be follow on secondary funding, whatever it might be, um, and then helping those startups to go along the appropriate journey. Okay. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, do you want to say anything about uh, the, the what you're doing to change? You, you talked about trying to make create create it possible to exit onto public markets. Is that what, more or less what you said? Yeah. So, started there's Bootcamp, an experiment in Amsterdam. Right? Yes, that's right. So, Startup Bootcamp is now tackling uh, this issue with liquidity um, with a fairly innovative new approach in which we take a basket of. Uh, of startups, so uh, because we when we run an accelerator, actually that basket always since it starts as zero, it's empty, um, and we run a program and we put ten startups in that in that basket where we have equity in in, in, in all ten of the underlying startups, um, and it's a consistent amount of equity. Uh, typically, we run three year programs, so then we effectively end up with a basket with thirty startups. Right, um, we that basket itself then is closed. So we take in the money, we invest in the thirty startups. We run the programs and then we don't take in any more money. We don't do any follow on funding. We don't take any more startups into our program. That basket is closed. We open another basket. Um, you can now, but that, but the basket itself, is called a stack and that stack is tradable on a junior exchange in Amsterdam called the N exchange. So that's been running for the last three years as a trial as a, and, and validation. And now it's, 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 uh, it's fully vetted and it's fully uh, uh, regulated. Um, and we now are going to scale that. So we're going to take that simple concept of one stack, or currently we've got 10 of them that have been running, um, but we can do that across hundreds. And by doing that, what you provide is you've de-risked the uh, startup investment for a particular uh, investor, a retail investor, especially you know someone that is you know more akin to early stage investing or maybe even would be an LP in a fund. Um, or an angel investor, now you say, great, you can put your, it's almost like an ETF, right? You're putting your money in an index of 30 startups that are all solving climate problems, or Perfect. 30 startups that are all solving FinTech or digital health. Um, and by doing that, you now can buy and sell your shares in the, in the vehicle without impacting the underlying startup. So the stack holds its shares in the startups for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, it doesn't matter, right? We, indefinitely. 
we will we never needs to exit its shares in the underlying startups because the liquidity problem for the investors has been solved. So we've decoupled the investors need for liquidity from the underlying startups, you know, ultimate life journey. And those startups could become very, very big uh, over time. And we will just continue to hold our shares for uh, perpetuity. So this is a new, the new project we're gonna be launching. Well, sorry, it's already running, but we're now launching the Africa, the first cohort in Africa. Uh, and we have a, our big, hairy, audacious goal, the, the BHAG of this, or Moonshot project, is to have 500 of these vehicles in the next 10 years. Each vehicle holds 30 underlying startups. That's 15,000 startups um, within the next 10 years. And that would have a net asset value of, of a billion dollars. Uh, so that's the, that's a big dream. There we go. And on that, we'll end this recording. I, I hope we get clearance from you and everybody else to post this because I would love to find out in five years whether it comes true. Mm, well, hopefully in one year, we'll, we'll already be along the journey, right? But yes. Um, and, and I think maybe the, the final point to make on that is that if, 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 we're, if we're successful, um, then that those early stage investors that are buying and selling initially ultimately make way or they, they kind of pave the, pave the way, the trailblazers for later stage investors and ultimately pension funds and private equity and, you know, even bigger. So, you know, when you have the full life cycle of investors being able to get exposure to early stage capital, that's the thing that profoundly changes. That's the hundred X uh, of, of increase in capital that will fund a hundred X increase in early stage startups. And by having a lot more early stage startups that are high caliber, that have gone through a, our, our vetted process, um, then the down, all the downstream players, the Launch Africas and all the other funds that you know are looking for the output will now benefit. So you know, this is one of those rising tide raises all ships. We have a lot more high caliber startups at the earliest stages, means a lot more high caliber startups at, at every stage that's subsequent to that. And one more time, the name to look for of the platform? Oh, so in exchange is the in it, exchange. It, I am it, it's, exchange. No, it's in X. The letters in X yeah. uh, change. Uh, okay. Currently, it's it's operate. It's it's in Netherlands. So you have to be a European citizen actually to, to trade on. And it. domain name is NL. Uh, in exchange dot NL or dot Earth. Oh, that's uh, yeah. No, actually, it's in exchange dot com. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, we uh, but we we're now in discussions with the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. We actually had discussions with the London Stock Exchange. So so there are big main board exchanges that uh, that are really interested in seeing how this concept can go from uh, a junior board to you know a main board. This is super exciting. Okay, yeah. if you if you're watching this, you heard it here first. <laughs> Maybe not first, but early. Sure. Okay, thank you very much. So actually, shouldn't it be pronounced N Exchange? Letter N. The letter N and, X. X and the letter X and hyphen X. change. And there's a hyphen change. Yes. I'm glad so we got that. It's there. an exchange. But but I mean but in the but in the domain name I, there's no hyphen. It's just okay. got it. Yes. We'll we'll put the scroll across so everybody can just click on the On yeah. that note we end Philip. Cool. Huge gratitude. Thank okay. you so much for sure uh, this amount of time. Okay. And, and good luck on, on number twenty nine, you know. <laughs> Boston Marathon number twenty nine. I, I might have to do the comrades sure. no. to, to shake things up. Absolutely, and to convince you, I can I can run a different race. All right, cheers. Thank you, thank you, thank you.